Amen. Yeah. So let's not, thank you. Let's not despise the small beginning. Thank you very much. And um, I pray that you will um, have encounters with God, these encounters with God, encounters that will challenge us, that will grow us, that will build our faith. Amen. You see, the greatest joy, that, uh, the greatest way to live in the place of joy, what gives us a great joy is when we live for other people. Amen. Amen. It gives us great joy. We live in a nation, we live in a society that is very selfish. We live in a society that's very individualistic. What can I get? That's the first thing we think about is what can I get out of this? And sadly, that same worldview has crept into church setting, whereas what can I get out of that? What can I get out of you today? See, that's not how we will live in this joy, you know, because I know a lot of people and I often say the most saddest people on earth are people in Hollywood. They have all the wealth, yet they don't have joy. Why? Because they don't live for other people. Now you can give a bit of charity here and there. Charity, giving money, throwing money out, that doesn't give you joy. What really gives you joy is when you lay your life down for someone. When you serve someone. When you see someone grow and flourish and being nurtured, becoming all that God has created them to be. And when those people walk in that freedom, walk in that fullness, that gives the greatest joy. Amen. Amen. So for us, how do we get, um, um, that's not what I'm talking about, but, but I just failed to say this. When we talk, talking about these people, and you know, we can sit in the church, we can pray as much as we want, but there will come a time that we need to go and share the gospel. Amen. You read the Bible, God is sovereign God. He doesn't need you and I to move. But for some reason in his wisdom, he's always chosen people. He's always chosen people. Why? Because we are his children. And there's something about working with your children. I know we're talking about Father's Day. Father's Day, we're celebrating Father's Day. But as a father, it's great to do something with your child. As a mother, it's great when you do something with your, with your child. It gives you great joy. It might take you two hours longer to finish the job. Now, I, I'm trying to build a rabbit uh, hutch. And I'm not a handyman, if you know. I'm not a handyman. But I said to Lionel, Lionel, you need to give me a hand. Show me how to do it. Because one thing I don't like saying is, I don't know how to do it. Because that's an excuse. And, um, and I want to talk about culture today, but, um, but we hide behind our culture. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, I didn't get, I wasn't brought up that way. But I said, no, that's not why, how I want to give excuse. I want to learn. And I know Lionel likes to do his own thing. And he li when he's building something, don't disturb him. He will go for it and do it all by himself. And I said to Lionel, Lionel, I don't want you to do it. I want you to teach me. So the last two days, been working on something. It took longer, double the time. I've seen few frustration looks on Lionel's face. His tone of voice changes time to time. Especially when the drill goes brrrr and the nail's not going in. Or the screw. But what I'm saying that is that it gives great joy. God, it gives God great joy when he sees you and I Stepping out in boldness and working in obedience to the word of God. Amen. So I'm saying to us, we got to go out. We've been praying. And if I'm bold enough, I'll say, stop praying now. Let's go out and actually talk to these people. Because as Christians, we can hide behind prayer a lot. But prayer without action. It's, I know it's faith without action. But can I just say, prayer without action is dead too. We need prayer, we need action. Amen. 
So this morning anyway, good morning. Uh, this morning I want to talk about uh, culture. And, uh, you know, we are a multicultural uh, uh, city. We are a multicultural nation. Uh, we got so many uh, cultures, uh, ethnicities within our city, this beautiful city, Auckland. And um, uh, uh, there are various cultures, and, and you look at all these cultures sort of intermingling and um, just bringing their own flavors and whatnot, and that's what makes this city a beautiful city. Amen. And the best way to experience that is around food and, and, and clothing. And when we had a cultural night here, and we had so many different types of food. And clothing, it's wonderful to celebrate culture, amen. It's beautiful, cultures. But not only just that, but um, uh, cultures can also, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It can, it can en en enhance uh, a lifestyle. And uh, uh, culture, uh, for instance, um, you, you know, even though you were born and brought up in New Zealand, but the culture in South Island is different to North Island. You know, the South Islanders th call, look at Auckland and go, you are weird. Uh, I lived in South Island. I understand a little bit about their psyche because they're very um, a tight community. Not that we're not. But even though we're one nation, different cultures. Amen. You might be brought up in the same city, but from one house to another house, there's a different culture. You might be Kiwi, uh, European Kiwi, born here, but you might have a different culture from one house to another house. Um, some houses you go into, the cultures are different. You know, you go into someone's house, they take their shoes off. If you don't take your shoes off, that's a big sin. Some houses you walk in with your shoes, they don't care. You know, there's, there's different behaviors, there's different mannerisms, and there's different cultures, and every house has a culture. Amen. Now, if you understand the, um, the, 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 the Japanese culture, you know, when they say hello, they go like this. You know? Uh, what's their greeting? I forgot now. Konnichiwa, that's the one. Konnichiwa. You know? Or, Anyasio. You know, in, in Korean... Or Indians go namaskar, right? There's different different ways of greeting and different, and in, we do this. That's even better, you know. But even within Indian culture, um, there are so many cultures within Indian culture. But when they when they're married, they look at oh, you like that girl? What's a culture like? What's a house like? What's a culture? Because you're marrying the family, and so so every house has a unique culture. Sadly, in Indian culture, some cultures, we oh, they're from this class, because there are different classes, you know, in India. And, and you're from this class, race, you don't marry those people because they're from a different culture. And uh, it's the same in many cultures. But houses, we as a have different culture. You go to different churches, there are different cultures in churches. You kind of think, okay, this is a different church. Okay, there's a different culture here. You go to another church, it's very quiet. Um, it's very bright. I know we are very dark. Some people, this is dark. It's not. It's okay. Uh, but there are different cultures, different emphasis. And, um, and I don't want to um, sort of pull any other culture down this morning. But when I, what I want to say is, when I come into your house, and if I'm living in your house, or there's a certain culture i got to follow. Amen. There's a certain culture that I've got to abide by. And, uh, and if you're a family, you bring your kids in a culture. Now, in some different homes, um, there's a different culture. So, for, for instance, if you talk about families, some families, um, if they have a problem, they don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. What do they do? They sweep it under the carpet. Not literally. What they do is they avoid problems. They don't talk about problems. And um, so because they want to keep everything nice and sweet and beautiful. And um, <laughs> and some cultures, especially if you're Italian background, 
You don't just talk it out, you bash it out. Right? You, the different cultures. And, um, and this morning, I want to talk about this church culture. Because culture, what culture you build is very important. People leave jobs, cities, towns, countries because of cultures. Culture is very important. And if it is only Jesus Christ, they can just spend time with Jesus in the bed under the duvet with the best preacher in the world on the podcast. No, that's not how God created us. We need cultures to be together. And now I, I teach, we talk about this as leadership, we understand these cultures, but I feel that it's important as we are journeying together to actually as a church understand the culture of this church, Expression Church. And we call this a cultures or culture of ups. Culture of ups. And there are six ups. Isn't that nice? It's all about up. Not down. Yeah. yeah um, it's, it's a culture of ups. As much as you go down, you got to go up. That's not number one though. The number one for culture of ups is look up. It's look up. When I say look up, not like this. Is look up is look to Christ. Number one thing in this family we teach is see God first. Everything revolves around God. I will read the scripture, but I want you to look at me, please. Okay? Um, everything revolves around God. If you don't see God first, then there is a major disconnection in your relationship with God. And everything else we do is just ritual. It's just mere actions and its performance because we've lost the connection with God. The first and foremost thing we say is seek God first. Looking up is seeking God has to be the number one priority in our lives. Coming to church won't save you, Jesus Christ saves you. And because I am saved, I come and fellowship with other brothers and sisters. So it's important to seek God first as an individual. To have relationship with Jesus. And Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 3 says, I'm reading this from message version. It says, do you see what this means? The author says here, and he's talking about, uh, 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 talking about these, uh, let's read it, all these pioneers who blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. He's saying, look, the veterans, the pioneers, all these other great men and women of God that have gone before us, they are cheering you and I. So when you're discouraged, when you're sad, look to God and recognize. And he says, he says, it means we better get on with it. Amen. Don't analyze till you're paralyzed. Don't sit there and think all the time. Thinking is good, but action is important. We need both. It means we better get on with it, strip down, start running and never quit. Amen. No extra spiritual fat. I love this. There are so many of us who are spiritually very fat. If only we can go stand in front of our spiritual mirror and look at how much we got so much knowledge now. We got so much knowledge. One of my, this is just me, but when we go, uh, when you go to a buffet meal, my appetite dies. I can't eat when there's, there's all this food everywhere. I just, I just can't eat because I'm going, there's too much food and too many people. 
Yes, I come from India, but I'm weird. Yeah, I understand. Too much culture, too much food, and too many people. And, um, and, 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 and so, so sometimes, you know, we can eat a lot of food and a lot of knowledge, 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 knowledge. And, and sometimes knowledge can actually deceive us. It's spiritual fact. We got, we got Bible app. We got so many knowledge, podcasts, different things. We're hearing, hearing, hearing. We're hearing so much, but we're not doing anything about it. So he's saying, no extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Amen. When we keep looking to Jesus, Jesus keeps revealing to us our sin. Amen. So look to Jesus. And he says, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we are in. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I know that uh, Tiffany and Jonathan are getting married soon and, and I'm sure they've got everything lined up. They've got their, their, their table setting, their candles, their glasses, their forks, their tissues, the toilet flush, what color and all the details for the wedding day. Wonderful, fantastic because they're mega organizers. But if they don't learn to see God first, their wedding is a one day event. Marriage is a lifetime commitment. Now you can be busy focusing on this wedding and all the jazz. We've known people who got married and the day after they got married, they got extremely sick on their honeymoon because all their energy went into getting this wedding organized. And we also know the show's Bridezillas, amen? But I'm just saying this, keep your eyes on God. Because what is the point when you're like, oh, he's the love of my life, she's the love of my life. And you both start again, you start getting, you know, working and getting married. But if you don't see God, then you've lost that love for God. And then you don't know how to love one another. It starts from God. So keep your eyes on God who finished, who started and finished the race. Study how Jesus did it. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. How cool is that? Jesus kept his eyes on, and he never lost his sight where he was headed. Keep your eyes on God. And look what he says. He said that, he, that exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. And do you know what? When we keep our eyes on God, we can put up with trials. And temptations. That's why James says, count it all joy, brothers and sisters. Because he never lost sight of where he was headed, that exhilarating finish, in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. What? Cross, shame, whatever. He put up with it. Jesus was, Jesus went through shame. Rejection, embarrassment, you name it. He's been through all that. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, isn't that good? It's like Eugene Peterson really was quite frustrated when he was writing, translating Hebrews 12 in, a, in message version. And he says, when you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Amen. When you keep your eyes on God, your faith, my faith, is an active faith. Amen. Now we're quiet. Last, a few weeks ago, Pastor Kara talked about living faith. I think a lot of people have faith. There is dead faith. That means you have faith, but it's dead. You love Jesus? Yes. Uh, but nothing else matters. Uh, you know, the dead faith, no action. But living faith is action. Living faith is alive. Living faith is actually having faith that God is still alive. 
Living faith is faith that says God can still do what he did 2,000 years ago. Living faith is saying that, yes, I read it in the scripture, but guess what? I believe he's going to do it today. That's living faith. So number one, look up. This house, I'm spending more time on this because this is very, very important. More than your five, because the rest of the five become easy when you keep this number one in your heart and mind. Look up. Please seek Jesus first. Please seek God first. Seek God first. Don't seek his hand. Seek his face. Don't seek the blessings of God. They will come. Seek his heart. Seek God first. Number one. Number one is look up. Number two, show up. Hmm. It's called show up. In this house, we don't just sit and talk about it and give our opinions because our opinions don't really matter to God. What matters to God is our obedience and our willingness. Amen. So number two is show up. And showing up means if I love God, I got to be with my brothers and sisters. The Bible teaches us in Hebrews 10.25, don't neglect the assembling of the brethren. Show up. You hear, I'm sure you all hear this. I love Jesus, but I don't like going to church. Oh, church, I can't stand church. How can you say I love and there is no action? Amen. Because I love God, look up. Number two is show up. I'm glad you showed up. Those that didn't show up, Lord, judge them. Now, bless them. You know, Acts chapter 2 verse 46 says, and day by day, this is, look at this, day by day, every single day, what did the, what did the early church do? They gathered together, amen, day by day, attending the temple together. Now, we don't do this day by day, but we do it week by week. See, Following Jesus is not out of commitment, sorry, it's not out of convenience, it's out of a conviction. I don't go to church because I'm free today. I don't go to church, I don't want to go to church because it's quite a sunny day. I could go out and, and go surfing or, or get up early and go skiing. When we were in Christchurch, there were few people in the church. They would look at the day and go, oh, it's a good day, 45 minutes to a ski field. They've gone skiing. But you see, if you love God, then you show up. Amen. Imagine, I know you've been married for seven months, almost. September 10th is seven months. Yes, who's counting? Um, but do you love your wife? You do, sometimes. Okay, I won't talk to you. Michelle, do you love your husband? Not sure now, eh? <laughs> But, but you see, if you love, you show up. You go home every night. You stay committed. You show up because love is action. If you love God, you show up. Amen. There's a prayer meeting. Show up. There's a revival night. Show up. They show up. It's important. It's, it's just show up. What did they do? They gathered together. What did they do gathering together? They gossiped all night. They complained all night or they fell asleep in the church. No. They broke bread. They received their food with gladness and generous hearts. They've studied the apostles' doctrine. That means they studied the Bible. So when you show up, what are you doing? I am bringing my excitement. You're bringing your passion, our love together, and we show up and we dig into the Word. We get into the Word. Number one reason why we show up is because we love God and we love one another and we need to create that culture that our conversation should be around Christ, not around rugby like we talked last week. 
you know uh, that's good to talk about rugby that's good to father's day good to talk about father's day good to talk about bacon good to talk about everything else golf and whatever you want to talk about your children but the number one thing we show up is to read the word of god together because it keeps us accountable so don't neglect the assembling of the brethren please because look if i live by myself Imagine if I'm all by myself, I'm awesome. Because I every thought I think is great. Because I've got no one to challenge me. And I think I'm amazing. But I have no one to tell me that I'm not that amazing if I'm living alone. But when I'm with people, they say, yeah, you are amazing, but not that much. You need to work on this. And who are you to tell me? As a brother in the Lord, I'm telling you. As a sister in the Lord, I'm telling you. It's accountability. Amen. How will I use my gifts if I'm not showing up? Show up. Show up. Look up. Number two is? Show, shut up? I thought someone said shut up. I will shut up soon, but I've got a few more minutes. Dan is nodding his head now. Okay, look up, show up, not shut up. Number three is speak up. Isn't it interesting that we have people who come once in a while and then they speak, give a lot of opinions. And they're kind of going, excuse me, excuse me. Now I'll use the word, shut up. Who are you? You don't show up regularly, but somehow you speak up a lot. Have you met those people who speak a lot? It's like, oh, you know, oh, oh, I would do better than better job than they do. Well, if you maybe you can, but learn to show up before you even speak up. Be, otherwise, your opinions don't matter anything. Now, I played rugby twice in my world, life, only twice. One was, no, actually once. One was touch rugby. The next one was a pretend rugby. I tried to play and I got winded and I said, this is from the devil. <laughs> I got winded and I really saw Jesus quite clearly for a little while. And I said, this is from the devil. Let's just go back to playing chess. Let's pick a fight with chess. No. Uh, um, and and, and, and so, so it's, it's showing up is... Is I can sit there and I, I, once I got winded, I know what rugby is now. But I, I can sit on the stands and go, oh man, how can you drop the ball? <laughs> oh, and I think it should do better than that. Who am I? Number one. Number two, is the All Blacks listening to my opinions? <laughs> no, they're not. So, I'll use the seventh one. Shut up! And I'm using with a high-pitched voice. Shut up! Now, shut up. Because be careful how we open our mouth. Don't walk into a restaurant and tell them how to run a business. Some of us have a habit of doing that, including me. And I think we come into church and we start thinking and we open our mouth and, and we pull people down. And uh, you may have the gift of prophecy. You may have the gift of leadership. You may have a beautiful gift. But your gifts won't last long because all you're doing is going around and mouthing off people. And when you mouth people off and you're like, oh man, that guy Dan, he can speak a long time. And Pastor Peter is so amazing, you know. Dan is average. You're like, oh, he'll put you to sleep. Peter is amazing. And I'm not, I know I'm just trying to make you laugh, but he is amazing. But you see what I'm saying? Uh, but you could vice versa it if you want to because the first shall be the last and the last shall be first. Okay. Um, but, um, 
But we can give opinions. But I want to say this. Our opinions don't matter until we show commitment. So, number one, look up. Number two, show up. Number three, speak up. Ephesians 4.29. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps each word a gift. I believe if we all practice this, man, this place will be an amazing place. That the broken will come and go, wow, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of this house because it's healthy. It's vibrant. It's not fake. Number four, team up. Number one is look up. Number two is show up. Number three is speak up. Number four is team up. You know, we are, we are teaching this in our household now that our kids are growing, we're teaching them, you know, to speak up, to, to, to you know, show up dinner time, to, to be there. And this, these things matter to us. Number one, seek God. Number two is show up. Number three is you got to speak up. Number four is uh, team up. Team up is, I've actually got them wrong, sorry. Number um, Number, number three is actually your team up. Number four is then you speak up. Okay? But uh, team up is Exodus 18, 17. I love this here. Look at this. This is not good. This is Jethro speaking to Moses. Moses' father-in-law exclaimed, You're going to wear yourself out and the people too. This job is too heavy, a burden for you to handle all by yourself. Now listen to me. And let me give you a word of advice and may God be with you. You should continue to be the people's representative before God, bringing their disputes to him. Teach them God's decrees and give them his instructions. Show them how to conduct their lives, but select from all the people some capable, honest men and, 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 who fear God and hate bribes. I think Moses' father-in-law was Indian. <laughs> Appoint them as leaders over groups of 1,150 and 10. Okay, so what he's saying is, look Moses, I know God gave you this task, but you can't do it alone. Make sure you work with a team. Yeah. Team up. That's why we keep saying stronger together. Stronger together. We are more powerful when we are together. We are far more powerful when we are together. Um, I was catching up with uh, Lorraine and Grant the other day, and we were talking about different gifts, and we uh, were saying that in church we need fivefold ministry. Amen. Imagine if you all, have, if you just have the prophets who are always pointing out, you know, and you're shooting people down. If you're shooting everybody, very soon your church will be empty. You need the pastors who will care for people. You need the prophetic realm to activate in the church. Amen. You need the apostles who are all about planting and leading and, and leadership. And then you have the teachers who will always tickle your ears with Hebrew word, Greek word. We already struggle with English word. <laughs> but we need teachers. But who can you teach if there's nobody here? But how long will you keep teaching to the same people? Because at some point of time, we're all going to die. The ones that listen need to go out and learn and exercise these. So teach us all this. We need teaming up. Amen. So I'm saying your gift is equally important as my gift. So we can bring our gifts together. Amen. If you are good at running sport events, do it. And if you're good at leading worship, do it. If you're good at hospitality, do it. If you're good at baking, 
Do it. We need every one of us together to work together. Amen. We need one another. Let's team up. Let's team up. Yeah, have you met some people who like to work by themselves? Because teaming up means it's frustration. Because you've got to deal with people. Who wants to deal with people? I'd rather do it alone than work with people. I'd rather, Lord, there is a mentality, I'd rather do it myself than do it with you. It's double the time, like Lionel and I, as I was talking earlier. It's, it's easy. But you see, when you do it with people, it, it somehow it's like the sandpaper ministry. Iron sharpens iron. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. And, tea, and part of that is when you're in a team. So number one is look up. Number two is show up. Three, speak up. Team up. Number five is when you're in a team, lift others up. Lift others up. Encourage people. I often say encouragement is oxygen to the spirit. One amen and few nods. But seriously, encouragement is oxygen to the spirit. When we are upset, we are quick to tell someone that we are upset. I'm upset with her. I won't tell you, but I'll tell him. I'm upset. Ooh. And we've got the face. I'm upset. But when they do something kind, we don't tell them. I was encouraging somebody last week. I said, this person was complimenting about another person. And I said, wow, did you tell that person? No, not yet. I said, please call them once we finish this meeting and encourage them. In, don't take what they do for granted. Amen. I've learned this the hard way. When Silvana was born, my mother and my father came to visit us. We were in Tauranga back then, living there. And I took my mother's cooking for granted. I did. And she cooked this beautiful meal. Cara was there. And I said something, and she quietly got out of the, got off the, uh, at the table, from the table, and she was upset. She was in tears, and she went into her bedroom. And I was going, what did I do? Because I was being critical about the cooking, but I was joking. She didn't get my joke. It's her problem. <laughs> no, it's not. It's my problem. Lift others up. Proverbs 12.25 says, Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Amen. You know, people say, I don't want to compliment you because I don't want to give you a big head. Well, when you don't compliment, even that small head will become no head. <laughs> don't be so harsh and be so mean and to, oh, I don't want to give her a big head. No, you give her, give her a compliment. Let the Lord sort the head out. Amen. Give, give compliments. It's okay. Um, not for ulterior motive. Okay? But the right compliments. Lift others up. Isn't it fascinating when, when you're an encouraging person, Rupert, people want to talk to you. But if you're always critical, complaining, mourning, or not saying anything, nobody wants to hang out with you. Because there's something about when you're truly positive, it attracts people to you. They want to hang out with you. But if you're negative, or you, you think, sometimes we think godliness is keeping our mouth shut. That's not godliness. I think that's part of being cowardly behavior. Godliness is not shutting your mouth shut all the time. Godliness is knowing when to open it and when to shut it. Amen. Because the, we have to tell truth in love. Proverbs 16.24 It says, Gracious words are like a honeycomb. 
sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Isn't that good? Gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Proverbs 25, 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. So speak nice words to one another. Amen. Lift others up. Don't fake it, please. Don't fake it when it's like American Idol, when they're bad singers and you still say, you're a good singer. Don't fake it. But the same, don't run away, Nelukshan. <laughs> this is for you, Nelukshan. Never give up. This is the last point. Okay, point number one is look up. Point number two is show up. Point number three is speak up. Point number four is team up. Point number five is lift others up. Point number six is never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never, ever, ever, never, never, ever give up. Never give up. Because you know why? Your heavenly father never gives up on you. He never gives up on you. So if you look up, you will never give up. Never give up. You may think you want to give up. You may feel like you want to give up, but never give up. We are not supposed to quit. We give up way too quickly. Never give up. Look at this. Look up. If you look up, you will show up. You speak up. You team up. You lift others up. And never give up. In Second Chronicles 15, 7 says, But as for you, be strong and don't give up. Don't give up. For your work will be rewarded. Your work will be rewarded. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. If, you're, if the devil is telling you to give up, don't give up. If, you're, if your mind is telling you to give up, what's the point? Don't give up. He who began a work in you, he is faithful. Even when you let God down, He is faithful. Even when you turn your back on Him, He is faithful. Even when you do something that brings displeasure to Him, He is faithful. And He never gives up on you. So giving up is from the devil, not from God. Because He never gives up on His creation. He never gives up on His children. And He's faithful to you. Never give up. Galatians 6, 9. You will hear that a lot in this church. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. You know, we only, last week I said we only get burnt out when we stop looking to Jesus. That's the only time we burn out. Because if we look to Christ, the Bible is very clear. He who refreshes others will be refreshed himself. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There are so many scriptures that tell you, if you look to Christ, you will never burn out. But if you don't look to Christ, I mean, Peter, when he looked at the waves, he doubt, fear came in and he lost his sight. You will, we will go through difficult times. Yes, discouragement. Yes, doubt. Yes, fear and all this. But as long as our eyes are fixed on him, Amen. We will never give up. And he says, don't get tired. Or don't, and, he, and he goes on to say, at the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all. Starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Amen. Amen. Starting with the people who are closest to us in the community of faith. Do you want to be a world changer? First learn to change 
here. Before you go out into the world. I've had the privilege to receive teams overseas, from overseas in India missionaries. And now have the privilege to take them or send them. And sometimes when we had people, they didn't have a good walk of faith in their own church, but they wanted to come and change India for Jesus. Who are you fooling? When, you, when I can't have my own relationship in my own house, good. How can I have a good relationship outside? If I'm not effective in my own house, I can be, be effective outside. So I'm just making us think. So don't give up. Amen. And do good to those that are closest to you in the community of faith. Can I have the worship team, please? So as we, this is the culture of the church. And, and I want to say, if we are complainers, hey, good to give feedback. Please give feedback. Okay, but don't complain. And if you want to just, if you say, oh, you know, um, the church is not growing or, um, or I'm not growing because, because you're not showing up. You're not growing in your faith. And so the culture is when you come once in a blue moon and expect things to change, it won't change that way. It won't change that way. It's that everyday lifting of the, the, the weight, that's when you see the muscle. If you go one day or one, once, once in a lifetime to gym and go, man, oh, it's nothing happening. It won't ever happen. You're fooling yourself. Amen. So I want to say, as a church, this is our culture. And I pray that we embrace that, that number one, we look up to Jesus. Amen. This is not a religion, my friend. This is not tick the box. This is not about just show up and go home. No, 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 no. Before you show up, learn to look up. Then you show up. Then you team up. Then you speak up. And then you um, lift others up. And then never give up. Amen. Amen. But I say, oh, I don't need to serve in the church. I, I like to serve in the community. That's wonderful, but you can't neglect your spiritual house. Amen. So I want to encourage you, as a, every family has their own culture, but this is the culture that we have. And I'm not saying that this is the best out of every other church. No, this is who we are. This is who we are. We emphasize on the Word of God. We emphasize on commitment. We emphasize on being a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. We emphasize that your life matters to God and your lifestyle matters to God and to the family of faith. We emphasize that walking in righteousness and holiness will bring glory to God. We emphasize that reading the word will help you in your weakness. We emphasize that the word of God is the only thing that can change your life. We emphasize that fellowship, connect groups is the way to walk in, 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 in accountability, in, in safety, in encouraging one another, in using our gifts. We emphasize that coming together in prayer, coming together to seek God, God and prayer works. We emphasize that we can, if our house is strong, we can be strong out in the community. Amen. This is our culture. And if you want to come and show your giftings and your whatnot, and I will say, I don't need your giftings, I need your heart first. And I'm saying, God called each one of us to do great things. Amen. He's called each one of us to great things. There's greatness in you, Sandra, because Christ is in you. But your greatness will not be effective if you're not part of a community. We need one another. We need one another. Maybe you're good at baking and I'm good at eating. We're a team. Because what good is your baking if no one eats? How can I eat if no one's baking? It's a good team. And I'm bringing humor, but I hope it makes sense. Don't despise small beginnings. What can I do? If you're a good baker, keep baking. Seriously. If you're a good smiler like you are, keep smiling. At least that's warm. I can come to you and talk to you, but if you're... 
I don't want to come any closer. Who wants to follow that face? There's greatness in you. There's greatness in you. Great are you, Lord. Amen. Can we sing that and declare that as we close, great are you, God. Can we declare it? God, you are great. We are great because you are great. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God, we thank you that it's your breath that lives in me. And I'm going to pour out my praise. I'm going to sing to you. I'm going to declare. I'm going to lift your name up high. I'm going to exalt your name high above all names. Hallelujah. So Father, this morning we choose to look up, to show up, to team up, to speak up, to lift others up and to never give up. Hallelujah. Come on, can we sing that great argument?